In 1607, 104 Englishmen arrived in North America to start what would be the first permanent English settlement in the New World. Jamestown, Virginia was chosen as the location for the settlement as it was believed to have the ideal environment for the arduous undertaking. The settlement was funded by the Virginia Company, who also chose the council members who would lead the settlement. As might be expected, settling in a new land was by no means an easy task. The first 20 years, the settlers struggled a great deal, even going through what is called the starving time. The harsh winter, weather, food shortages, and conflict with local Native American tribes left the small population of 500 dwindling down to 60. Nevertheless, Jamestown remained the center of activity until 1698, when the state house burned down and the seat of government was transferred to Williamsburg. A few settlers initially chose to remain, but by the mid-18th century, the Jamestown settlement was no more. In 1994, the Jamestown Rediscovery Project was established in order to uncover and study the artifacts left by settlers in the area. Over the years, more than 3 million artifacts have been excavated from the site, and they tell stories of what life was like in the first settlement in the New World. In a 2012 dig in Jamestown, archaeologists found the remains of a 14-year-old English girl who had met a fate that was, to say the least, unsettling. The bones were found in a cellar together with artifacts that date back to some of the earliest years of the settlement. What was noteworthy about the discovery, aside from the age of the remains, was that the young girl's skull had been smashed in two. Douglas Owsley, a forensic anthropologist who examined the bones, said there was clear evidence of several strikes to the skull. One of the blows was even strong enough to split the skull in two, and Owsley explained to the Smithsonian, The chops to the forehead are very tentative, very incomplete. Then the body was turned over and there were four strikes to the back of the head. It's unknown whether the girl, whom archaeologists call Jane, died of natural causes or whether her death was intentional. It is evident, however, that the girl was dismembered by her fellow settlers, settlers who had every intention of eating her. In a press conference, the discovery was called the first real evidence of the cannibalism that happened in Jamestown, most likely during the starving time when food was scarce and settlers were desperate to survive in any way they could. Researchers also found cuts on the girl's forehead, jaw, and shin bones. Owsley thinks that the girl was not killed deliberately, but may have died naturally. Regarding cannibalism, he said, It's just that they were so desperate and so hard-pressed that out of necessity, this is what they resorted to. Random teeth are always creepy, and surprisingly, several teeth with cavities were also discovered at James Fort in Jamestown. The teeth seem to have fallen out by themselves, as there are no markings on the teeth that would prove intentional extraction. Upon studying the teeth, researchers concluded that the person to whom the teeth belonged had suffered from advanced periodontal disease. Periodontitis is a disease of the gums that is commonly the result of poor oral hygiene and is still commonplace today. The infection may cause the gums to bleed and swell, resulting in tooth loss. It's most likely what happened with the teeth that were found in Jamestown. When the first settlers arrived in Jamestown in 1607, there were two surgeons and a barber within the group. The surgeons were most likely the ones who took care of the settlers' teeth, as well as their overall health, but barbers were also given surgical responsibilities because of their know-how in using razors. Hate going to the dentist today? Imagine what it was like when settlers used pumice, herbs, gunpowder, or borax to whiten their teeth. Those ingredients were caustic and damaged the enamel, leading to tooth decay and teeth falling out. I've been saving all month for this. I think I need a root canal. I'm sure I need a long, slow root canal. In July 2006, the Jamestown Rediscovery Archaeology team made an exciting discovery when they recovered artifacts from the bottom of a 17th century well. Among the items they found was a child's leather shoe that dates back to 1617. When settlers arrived in Jamestown in 1607, there were a few tradesmen who came along. While there's no confirmation a shoemaker was one of them, someone practicing the profession was most likely there as early as 1609. The child's shoe was made of goat skin and was done in a style popular in the 17th century. The shoe was found to be a size 1 and was only slightly worn, most likely because its owner hadn't learned how to walk yet. The leather shoe is a rare find, as not many artifacts were discovered related to children in Jamestown. One of the most exciting discoveries found in Jamestown were the remains of more than two dozen beetle species that originated from Europe. One of the species, the sawtooth grain beetle, most likely infested grains and food supplies when ships traveled from Europe to Virginia. Researchers confirmed that the insect remains date back hundreds of years, and even John Smith wrote about the pest, saying that the storage, quote, contained as many worms as grains. In 1608, he wrote about the worm infestation in the colony's food supply, but because food was scarce, settlers had no choice but to eat them. He described a dire situation, writing, all the provision of the store was so rotten with worms as the hogs would scarcely eat it, yet it was the soldier's diet. 
The discovery of insect species also provided researchers a clearer picture of Jamestown's environment in the early 1600s. Other insects found include bed bugs, as well as the Trox scabber beetle that thrived on the food supplies and on the trip from England to Virginia. Well, this is our first night on American soil, and we've already discovered a river and mosquitoes. In the 16th and 17th centuries, combs were unlike the ones used today. They were more extravagant and usually made of bone or ivory with intricate carvings. However, they weren't merely used for fixing hair. Combs also had a hygienic purpose and were used for removing lice from hair or beards. In Jamestown, more than 40 combs have been discovered during the archaeological digs. Although the combs were made of bone, they weren't fancy at all. Most of the combs found were double-sided, with one side having smaller spaces between the teeth to comb away lice, and the other having wider spaces for grooming. Insect removal was, however, of the utmost importance. We shall build our town here. Splendid. Oi! Mosquito. It's an insight into the overall hygiene at the time of the first settlers, and needless to say, it wasn't great. Nits, fleas, and lice were commonplace, making combs less about presentation and more about pest removal. Yikes. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about strange archaeological discoveries are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.